all right what's up ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel i just figured i'd do this while it's kind of fresh in my mind tartaria the tartarian empire and the mud floods it's crazy it's a super compelling theory that i've just run across recently i think it was a few weeks ago maybe a month or so ago that um Rex Bear League Project did an interview talking about the Star Forts and Tartaria. I always want to do these uh, videos, but I never really, I think about it, and I'm like, all right, I have to write down a whole bunch of stuff, make a whole bunch of notes, make a compelling show, you know what I mean? Like, perfect it, but then I never do, and then the idea just floats away into the ether. Uh, I love Cardinals, by the way. So this theory is its one of the most paradigm-shifting theories that I've heard in a long time. And it's extremely compelling. Each time that I've heard it, so the first time I heard it was uh, an episode on the Leak Project. Go to his videos uploads and then you gotta scroll back like a month and a half or so which is probably 70 podcasts <laughs> but scroll back quite a ways and there is an episode on there where he interviews a couple gentlemen about the star forts and the antiquitech so i guess the the four main words is tartaria or the tartarian empire the mud floods the Antiquitech, and I forgot the other one already, but that, it's just stunning, it's like, it's almost the most compelling theory that I've come across in my life, and I like some compelling theories, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what I'm going to start calling them instead of the other C word. Because the other C word just takes away from, it like puts up a wall for most people. They're like, oh, it's a, a C theory. But I think if you call it a compelling theory, because that's what it is to me. So most of these things are, they're compelling theories. It's like, wow, that's quite a story. <clears throat> it's the most compelling theory I've heard since... Probably the electric universe theory. I mean, like, um, once you discover that it's possible that through, you know, plasma electric interactions between planetary bodies can cause something like the Grand Canyon in a matter of hours or days, maybe even minutes. It just changes the entire paradigm. You're like, what? What did that happen? Rex just did a video a couple days ago. He's down in the desert, in southern Colorado area. It's just wide open desert, you know, like <laughs> there's no plants, barely any trees. Well, I guess there's trees and plants, but it's definitely not the most lush, habitable area. And he's going, millions of people used to live out here. Not millions of years ago. Where did they all go? What happened? What kind of cataclysms, catastrophes? And those aren't things I like to think about. But what kind of things have uh, befallen our past that we may not have been properly taught or educated about, or things that may have been purposefully held from what we were taught or educated about. And that might go back four generations to, say, you know, the 17 or 1800s, the things they started to teach our great-grandparents and their children and 
should be our grandparents, at least mine, and their children, which would be my parents. I mean, this might go back five generations, ladies and gentlemen. It's interesting to think about. You might be saying, Chase, what the... What is this all about? What are you talking about? That's a good question. That was a good question. I pr appreciate the man who said that. What is this all about? And it's like, well, I, I think this is about getting it out. I could keep it in. But then it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't do anything. It's not cataloged. It's not recorded. Especially if I don't write it down. You know? This might be like my version of automatic writing. <laughs> Thought about that. I've almost wondered if there's a way you can learn to automatic write. But so, um, first video recommendation was Rex's about the Star Forts, Tartaria, Tartarian Empire. Second video I seen was, I think it was yesterday morning while I was working. I was listening to, um, Resistance Radio. I'm so glad to see Jeff back and doing great. It's been a long time since I've seen Jeffrey Doherty since he hopped off of the hopped off of YouTube and I failed to follow him to other platforms. It seemed like when I tried to get on I don't know if it was Telegram or Rockfin or one of those, but I had to pay like a monthly thing for it and to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I'm broke half the month anyways, and I'm hoping my paycheck will be enough to cover half the rent so that my partner can get the other half of the rent, and then we'll see about the power bill. That's kind of it's kind of how my life goes as far as financially. I've been working on that, but, you know, it's almost like a paradigm thing that you have to break out of and transcend. And so, this, yeah, second video, Jeff did an interview. I wish I remembered her name. I want to say Michelle Gibson, but I could be totally wrong on that. But, you know, I'll get that. I'll leave it. I'll leave these shows linked in the comments below because they're all on YouTube. And so I'll go do that for you so you can find them in the description underneath this video. And then you can check him out. Because he did an interview with her about Tartaria and the mud floods. And the orphan trains. Which is, the subject isn't for the weak, you know, the faint of heart. It was, <clears throat> it was causing me some trepidation. Just being open-minded to the possibilities. And see, that's some of the things when you get into these compelling theories. It's like, um, they get, you know, when it breaks down everything you thought you knew about the world, even after you thought you knew a lot of compelling theories, it's like, whew, it's tough. It's tough on you to be damaging. So it's not for everybody. And I ain't saying this is all true. It's just one of the most profound, intense, compelling theories that I've seen a long time, and especially the architecture. Some of the, my phone battery's gone down, so if the video ends randomly, that's why. Some of the architecture from the world fairs or the exhibitions in the late 1800s, like, I don't know how to take that. I'm like, was that stuff real? I mean, that sounds stupid to say. <laughs> but like, if that stuff was real, how was it so easily destroyed? If we're talking about, you know, Washington Monument type structures over massive areas with inventions and things that defy the mind like there's videos of moving sidewalks in paris back in the 1800s next to horses and buggies in the dirt street and there's these buildings that are 
the, you know, the Greco-Roman or the, the Neo-Gothic type design that are just stunningly, remarkably huge and well done. And so the claims of when they were built, built and then why they were all destroyed, or not all, but a lot of them destroyed, there was this one thing, I don't know if it was a video or a rendering, and that could make a huge difference, which is key in this discovery process. Before the video, uh, video ends, I want to tell you the third one. So the first one was Rex Tartaria Starfort's on Leak Project. Second one, Jeff, who just interviewed somebody about the mud floods. And the third one is a documentary. It's a really long documentary. I think it's called Stolen History, um, Lifting the Veil of Illusion. I'll have them all linked in the description so you can kind of take a glance peek. The third one's a three-parter. It's almost three hours. I think it's like 17 minutes or something, and then it's an hour or so, and then the third one's two hours. I haven't gotten to the third one yet. But just as a thought experiment, it's mind-blowing. Makes you think of George Orwell. In 1984, but in a different way. More like 1894. I don't know. It's powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Super powerful. But like the simple thought is that there was a empire of empires that was connected globally. And see, this is a paradigm I've gotten to already with the looking at all the ancient megalithic structures and thing about Atlantis and pre-Egypt and all that stuff. So easy a caveman could do it. I love how Rex says that. It's like, oh yeah, what about Puma Punku? What about Teotihuacan? <laughs> and what about all these places? And then you start to bring up this new thing, and it's like, what about all these structures that were destroyed in the late 1800s? The World's Fairs being the most interesting subjects. But so it's kind of along those lines that there was an empire, global empire of abundance and holistic ener free energy and all this beautiful utopian things that we can think of and imagine that we ascribe to Atlantis. And it wasn't that long ago. And something happened. Or this is the confusing part. Something happened between the 1500s and the 1700s that caused everybody to be trying to rebuild or come out of something drastic and dramatic and then like the free the idea of the freemasons getting their name from being the people that found this freemasonry this these structures that were already built that we didn't build in the 1800s, 1700s, 1900s that we say that we did. Anyways, I'll leave it there. Check the description below, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to subscribe. If you got value, smash the like button. Leave me a comment let you know. This is sure to be one of those subjects that many people have many opinions on. And that's a great thing. Let's share our opinions and stay open-minded. Have the strength of heart. Know thyself. And we'll make it to the future, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.